Hello and welcome to EliteGuitarist.com. My name is Tavi Ginariu, and again I have the great privilege to teach you a new repertoire piece. This time we will learn to play Lagrima, one of the most famous pieces composed by Francisco Tarega. Lagrima means teardrop or tear, and uh, the story goes that uh, Francisco Tarega, as he was touring throughout Europe, was missing his homeland so much that he penned this music, Teardrop. And so let's get started with this piece. It is a very simple piece. It takes about two minutes to perform, only about 16 bars. And the section of this piece is ABA, which means that the first section uh, is an identical repeat to the third section. The first section is the key of E major. The middle section is in the key of E minor, and then we will return back to E major. Okay, so let's begin. This is the first section of Lagrima by Francisco Tarega. Let's begin this E major section. And we're going to begin the piece by playing two notes together, an E and a G sharp. We're going to be playing an E with the first finger on the fourth string, second fret, and a G sharp with the fourth finger on the first string, fourth fret. We're going to play that together with free strokes. So we're simply going to put pressure on the strings with the right hand and then release and gently pluck. You could play that with P and M together. Let's try it again. E and G together. Followed by a B open string. We're going to play that one as a free stroke with the index finger. So E and G followed by B. Now we have to be careful that this recurring B note, the open B string, is viewed as accompaniment. It is not part of the main theme, but simply accompaniment. And so uh, make sure that you do not play the one with the same level, with the same intensity that you play the melody line. Here we go, E and G sharp together, followed by B. Then we're going to slide the fourth finger on the same string to the fifth fret. And we're going to play this A note with the fourth finger on the first string, fifth fret. And we're going to play together with an F sharp note. And we'll find this one on the fourth string. So we're going to play an F sharp note with the second finger, fourth string, fourth fret. We're going to play these two notes together. Followed by open B. So F sharp and A. Followed by open B note. And then we're going to take exactly the same formation, the second and the fourth finger, and we're going to slide them over two frets. So F and A together, and then we're going to slide this whole combination over two fret so that we'll play a G sharp with a second finger on the fourth string, sixth fret, and a B note with a fourth finger on the first string, seventh fret, followed by open B again. So let's take this first uh, grouping of notes. Here we go from the beginning. From here, we're going to keep the fourth finger as a guide finger on the first string, which means that we're simply going to slide this, not in a glissando form, but release the pressure on the string and just barely touch the string and use the string as a guide. And you're going to slide this all the way to the second fret. And so the fourth finger will play an F sharp note on the first string, seventh fret and we're going to play a D sharp at the same time with the first finger on the fourth string, first fret, followed by B. So, in context. B, and then we're going to follow that B open note with an A played with the third finger, third string, second fret. We're going to plug the one with the index finger, followed by another open B note, 
and then we're going to play a B on the fifth string. We're going to use the second finger to play a B on the fifth string, second fret, followed by open B. So in context, When we slide from this fifth position back to the first position, we want to keep all those notes ringing. They're part of a B7 chord. Therefore, we should not simply play the note and then stop it immediately. That would sound too truncated. And so imagine that you have a sustained pedal for your guitar so that you let all the notes combine and create those wonderful overtones. And we're going to repeat that section identically. So, in real performance, you'll play twice. Repeat exactly the same section. And from here, we're going to go to a C-sharp minor chord played all the way in the ninth position, which means that the first finger hovers over the ninth fret here. And we're going to play a C sharp and E together. The E will be played with a fourth finger on the first string, 12th fret, and the C sharp is played with a third finger on the fourth string, 11th fret. And we're going to use P and M for the right hand, followed by an E note, and this E note is played with the first finger on the third string, ninth fret. So C and E together, C sharp and E together. Then we're going to play a B and D sharp together, followed by an E. And for this, we're going to form a partial bar, pressing four out of the sixth string on the ninth fret. And we're going to play B and D sharp together. D sharp is played with the fourth finger on the first string, 11th fret. And B is played with the first finger, which is a partial bar chord on the ninth fret, fourth string. Follow again by E and the E note is pressed by the first finger on the, th on the third string, ninth fret. Again, so from C sharp and E, followed by B and D sharp, and E on the third string, then A and C sharp, followed by an E, we're going to play the A with the first finger on the fourth string, seventh fret, and C sharp together with that A played with a fourth finger, first string, ninth fret, followed by an E note. And this E note is played with a third finger on the third string, ninth fret. And then we're going to play an octave B followed by a G sharp. The B is played with a third finger on the fourth string, ninth fret. And then the high B is played with the first finger, first string, seventh fret. I'm a little out of tune here. Followed by a G sharp. And the G sharp is played with a fourth finger, second string, ninth fret. So let's review just these four groupings, starting with C sharp and E. In tempo, it should sound something like this. After this, we're going to play a very interesting chord that almost sounds like a harp. It has that harp effect because we're going to combine open strings 
with notes that are played on uh, strings that are pressed. And we're going to begin with the C sharp. C sharp played with the third finger on the fourth string, 11th fret, followed by an open high E string. E, and now we're going to play an F sharp. The F sharp is played with the fourth finger on the third string, 11th fret. And then an A note. The A note is played with a second finger on the second string, 10th fret. So C sharp, E, F sharp, and A. And for the right hand, we're going to play the C sharp with the thumb, high E note with A, F sharp with I, and A with M. We'll follow that with a B and a G sharp together. The B is played with the first finger, fourth string, ninth fret, and the G sharp is played with the second finger on the second string, ninth fret. Together, and for the right hand, we'll use P and I, followed by an open E string. So, we're going to move all the way back to the second position and we're going to form a partial bar chord with the first finger. Uh, we're going to press just two out of the six strings with the first finger and we're going to play an A sharp with a second finger on the third string third fret uh, together with a C sharp pressed on the second string by the partial bar here and then F sharp the F sharp is already pressed by the first finger on the first string second fret and from here we're going to form a, a full bar chord or a partial bar chord five out of the six string or even a full bar chord whatever works for you is fine or I prefer to do five out of the six strings so that I don't get any kind of ghostly notes, notes that just kind of creep in by simply laying the finger down the, the fretboard. Sometimes you hear that uh, little hint of a low F sharp. So we're going to play a B note with the first finger on the fifth string, second fret, followed by an A and D sharp together. The A is already pressed with the first finger on the second fret, third string, and then the D sharp is pressed with the fourth finger on the second string, fourth fret. So, so thumb, then I and M together, and we're gonna go to an E major chord. We're going to play E, G sharp, and high E together. The first E note is played with the second finger, fourth string, second fret. The G sharp is played with the first finger, third string, first fret, and the high E note is an open first string. And I'm using P, I, and A for the right hand. Followed by a very soft concluding low sixth string. Okay, so now that you know the notes for this tutorial, um, just a couple of performance remarks. It is really helpful to break up um, the, the way you play this piece because it is somewhat repetitive. I think it's really helpful to play it in a variety of ways. I always like to begin a piece in a very unassuming way, um, not using a lot of rubato and not using a lot of arpeggiated notes. So, in the beginning, uh, you could play the first two notes together, not arpeggiato. Now, as we repeat that section identically, uh, we should play it somewhat differently. So perhaps you'd break apart some of the notes. And perhaps adding some more vibrato 
to bring out the melody. Now this next shift, it's a pretty big shift from the first position all the way to the ninth position. And you should take great advantage of that high open string that rings out. So as you play. You hear how there's still sound there. And you use that open D string to bridge the gap between that position change and create some continuity of sound rather than having complete silence. that is not very musical and so take advantage of that high open G string in order to bridge the gap between the uh, first and the ninth position. And so I hope you do well and I'll see you for the second section of this piece, the E minor section.